Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to oppose uh, the proposal to review the Division of Revenue to reduce the amount of money that this House allocated to county uh, governments. From the 400 billion shillings that we passed to 380 billion. Honorable Speaker, I was listening to my brother Halwale uh, praising his governor for paying pending bills of 771 million shillings. I was wondering if he had not seen that report, but he has mentioned it, that Kakamega County spent 521 million Kenya shillings on buying tea and mandazi for Fernandez Baraza and his friends. Honorable Speaker, these are the governors who create justification for why government proposes such bills. This bad behavior that Gov uh, Senator Halwale is referring is not widespread across the country. There are county governments that are really doing their best to serve and deliver to their people. But it is governors like Halwale's governor, Governor Fernandez Baraza, spending a half a billion shillings on tea and mandazi. These are the people who make uh, it very difficult for us to push further resources to go to the counties. On the Bochea, I also had another governor who is, I would call him the, uh, my mother's governor, the governor for Bungoma. He went after the senator for Bungoma, insulting this entire Senate Honorable Speaker, that we have no role in making sure that governors or county governments get the money that they deserve. Yet it is us here today who have to stand up and defend devolution and say not a shilling less from the 400 billion shillings that we passed here in this house. Where is governor for Bungoma now? Where is he now? Does he not depend on the senator for Bungoma to be able to make these arguments? So some of these governors make our lives very difficult, but it's not all of them. Many of them, I remember when this matter was before the committee, I have never seen such a high attendance of governors before this house. I think all of them were here because it was a question discussing the revenue that is going to counties. They make it very difficult for this Senate to make these arguments. We make these arguments, Honorable Speaker, not because we like our governors, but because we swore to defend devolution. Because I understand that the money that I pass in this house does not go to Sakaja as an individual. It goes to the people of Nairobi and the programs of the people of Nairobi. Honorable Speaker, the reason that I oppose this is fourfold. Number one, if you look at section two of this bill, it talks about the purpose of the bill being to amend the Division of Revenue Act of 2024 so that you can have what the bill very strangely calls, Honorable Speaker, equitable sharing of the shortfall in revenue. Now, this is something that I have never heard of before. Because in my reading of Article 202, Honorable Speaker, the only thing that is subject to equitable sharing is revenue, national revenue that has been raised. There is no mention anywhere in the Constitution of sharing of shortfalls. That does not exist in the Constitution, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, from the onset, you can see that the object of this bill is unconstitutional. Number two, Honorable Speaker, my reading and understanding of the Constitution is that there is an annual division and allocation of revenue bill. One bill, if you look at, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, the provisions of the Constitution, the Constitution only speaks about an annual division of revenue bill. That means, Honorable Speaker, every 12 months, Parliament is only allowed one division of revenue. There is no way you can introduce a second one. And once we have passed that bill, Honorable Speaker, it is my view that because the Constitution talks of an annual division of revenue, you cannot introduce a second one. It comes only once and it is provided for you cannot have more than one annual division of revenue bill. And so too, Honorable Speaker, in my view and interpretation of the Constitution, the annual uh, allocation of revenue bill. Honorable Speaker, it has been the tradition of previous uh, uh, divisions of revenue bill to provide that the shortfall in revenue is to be borne by the national government. Curiously, they were, uh, this bill proposes to amend section 5 of the bill that we passed here earlier this year that the shortfall be borne by both the national and county governments. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, it even goes further to say that the shortfall to be borne by the national government cannot exceed 15%. Which is why, Mr. Speaker, I want to come to the third reason why I strongly oppose this bill. It is that limitation 
of the, uh, the ceiling to which the national government can bear the shortfall that has resulted in this bill proposing an even less amount to the amount that we passed in this House for the last financial year, Honorable Speaker. What we want to agree, and this is a debate we have had here with my colleagues in the Senate, is that whatever happens any financial year, we as a Senate cannot pass a division of revenue bill that reduces the amount of money that is going to be allocated to the counties if compared to the, what we had passed in the previous financial year. Honorable Speaker, you, you know it is on record that last year, even after uh, the Commission on Revenue Allocation had proposed that we in this Senate uh, give uh, counties 415 billion shillings. Honorable Speaker, we only gave 385 billion shillings for the last financial year. This bill proposes an amount, a figure of 380 billion shillings, which is 5 billion shillings less than the amount that was sent to the counties last year. Honorable Speaker, as the Democrats in the U.S. are now saying, we are not going back. We must push this journey of devolution forward. We cannot go back to 380 because to do so, next year we will be told, these counties now we will give them 370. At some point, Honorable Speaker, because the enemies of devolution continue to gather, at some point, Honorable Halwale, if we are not careful, we will be told it's 300, then 250, then 200. Then we'll be told all these functions now will be transferred back to the national government. As people sworn to defend devolution, Honorable Speaker, it is my view that as the pocket of devolution shrinks, even so the role of this Senate and the role of senators. If we expand the pocket of devolution, we as senators get a greater mandate because we are overseeing or oversighting greater resources. Honorable Speaker, lastly, the question of the disbursement schedule. Before I go to the disbursement schedule, this 400 billion shilling uh, mark, those of you who have been in this house before me know that it is a psychological mark that has been very difficult to break. That since the advent of devolution, it is this fourth Senate that has breached that target of 400 billion shillings. Honorable Speaker, we all took pride in the fact that we were the first senators to be able to push the envelope of devolution beyond 400 billion shillings. For us to then sit again and reduce it, Honorable Speaker, it is something that I believe we cannot allow. And it is because, in my view, the law already anticipates on how to deal with shortfalls. I don't refuse that because of uh, the matter of the Finance Act and the fact that the President had to return it, it has resulted in a shortfall in the provisions for the budget that we had this year. But Honorable Speaker, how do you justify going below even the amount that had been allocated in the previous financial year? Because we all know that with the collapse of Finance Bill 2024, or the Finance Act of 2024, the tax raising measures we reverted to are the tax raising measures of 2023, which supported the 385. I want to hear a justification why we would fall below the figure of 385 to 380 billion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, just this morning, because I'm a member of uh, the Senate Business Committee, together with the Leader of Majority, we were discussing the cut in the Senate budgets. Honorable Speaker, we did not complain. Even Senator Kalwale did not complain. When we were told that the budgets of the Senate are being cut by 20% as a result of the revenue shortfalls in the projections in the Finance Act. It is okay. It is okay, Honorable Speaker. We don't have a problem with cuts to the Senate or to Parliament as an institution. Parliament as an institution has been told we have to cut 3 billion shillings. I think the figure is uh, slightly over 3.5 billion shillings in our budgets, and that is okay. We can make do with that. But for the people waiting for services in the grassroots, in the counties, Honorable Speaker, we cannot afford to take a step back. I will give you an example, Honorable Speaker. I was very proud as a Senate of Nairobi that uh, for the first time, the county of Nairobi was going to receive above 20 billion shillings in its shareable revenue. We have a program in Nairobi called the School Feeding Program, Honorable Speaker, and it gobbles up almost 10% of the entire amount we receive as equitable revenue. Unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, although that program is expressed to cost almost 1.8 billion shillings, that program is only able, sufficient to serve 30% of the children of Nairobi, leaving a whooping 70% of the children of Nairobi outside that program. 
Now, the promise by the governor is that his plan is to expand it so that it can feed all the children of Nairobi, to expand it to the so-called upbed schools, informal schools, which carry the majority of the school-going children in Nairobi. We need money. Honorable Speaker, we need money. In Nairobi, we need money. I know Senator Halwale has uh, praised my governor about uh, the revenue-raising measures that have been put in place, but we have come nowhere close to the potential of Nairobi, as per the estimates from even the control of budget himself. So, Honorable Speaker, we need money in Nairobi. Now, the most heartbreaking thing for me when I came to this Senate is to discover that you can actually be allocated money in a budget. But receiving that money is a different story altogether. We passed something here, Honorable Speaker, called the disbursement schedule, which Treasury has never honored. What is the point, Honorable Speaker, of us passing things here that nobody ever follows? The governors there are the, 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 the exchequer. Money hitting the county government's account is a, a hit and miss game. It's just part of the Honorable Speaker. You can go three months, you can go two months, you can go four months without money, and you don't know when it will come. So it has been very disappointing for me to realize that we can put up this fight, and yet, at the end of the day, this money will not reach the grassroots in the manner in which uh, it is proposed to reach. So, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, my view is that as a Senate, we should always try to fight to push the envelope for the basket of devolution, that any attempts to reduce that amount is something that is to be resisted here on the floor of the Senate. And I understand all the discussions that have been had. And Senator Halwale has spoken about some of them, uh, the bad manners we see from the county governors. I pray that this Senate does not take out the bad manners of governors on the public themselves, the women who sell Njugu at Hayega, or Mwami Senator Halwale. They have never offended you. They have never offended the public pass. So we must find a way of dealing with some of these governors. And I'm really looking forward to these two governors appearing before the Senate, the ones I've mentioned here, because they are in the habit of addressing members of the Senate at funerals, at funerals, and even inciting some MCAs, you hear them insulting senators from morning to evening. But when they come here, Honorable Speaker, you will think they are those mutotomisa we used to see when we were doing pastoral class. So another one came here, even uh, he tried to run away from the committee by saying that he had forgotten his glasses at home, he couldn't see. Because he didn't want to read the document that was incriminating. So, Honorable Speaker, the same vigor that we fight for these resources, we must be there as senators to protect those resources when they get to our county governments and ensure that it actually benefits the people of the counties that we, uh, we, 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 we represent. So, Honorable Speaker, with those uh, few remarks, I want to say categorically that for me, for me, I do not think that there is enough justification for this reduction beyond even what was allocated last year. And I would wish that every time we get opportunity to vote for monies for the counties, we are increasing and not decreasing. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator uh, Sifuna, Senator Mongatana.